Welcome back to our IB Chemistry video series. This is the second video in IB Chemistry Topic 1, Stoichiometric Relationships, where we will be looking at the concept of atomic and molecular mass, moles, isotopes, and how to determine empirical formula. Atomic and molecular mass are two important terms, so let's take a moment to explore them in full. The mass of a single atom is referred to as its relative atomic mass. These are the numbers that you will be familiar with from the periodic table. For example, carbons is 12, nitrogens is 14, and oxygens is 16. However, elements do not exist in just one form, but as various isotopes. These versions have the same number of protons, but slightly different number of neutrons. Therefore, the relative atomic mass of an element is a weighted average of all of these isotopes, hence why most of them are not whole numbers on the periodic table. Relative atomic masses are always quoted relative to carbon-12. The mass of a single molecule is referred to as its relative molecular mass. This is simply calculated by adding up all the relative atomic masses of the elements within that molecule. For example, ethane, C2H6, contains two carbons and six hydrogens. Each carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12.01 and each hydrogen 1.01. Therefore, the total of these is 30.08, and as such we say the relative molecular mass of C2H6 is 30.08. Ionic compounds are treated just the same as molecules. However, they're known to have a relative formula mass. In reality, you do not need to use the exact numbers for the relative atomic mass calculations. Instead, round to the nearest number. We will be doing so from here on out. The only exception to these are for elements whose relative atomic mass lie between two numbers. For example, chlorine is 35.5. Do not use 35 or 36. In chemistry, substances are often measured in moles, which is just a complicated way to say a number. Just like a million is equal to 1,000,000, one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. This is known as Avogadro's number. The important concept to get your head around is that moles are simply just numbers. If you have one mole of apples, you will have 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 apples. If you have one mole of oxygen, you would have 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules of oxygen. That seems simple. So let's now think about atoms. If you had one mole of oxygen molecules, i.e. 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules, you would have twice this in oxygen atoms, as there are two atoms in each molecule of oxygen. This principle applies on any level. Let's look at an example question. What is the number of atoms in 0.2 mole of propyne, C3H4? 0.2 moles is simply 0.2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Therefore, there are 1.2 times 10 to the 23 molecules of propyne in 0.2 moles. Given that there are 7 atoms in each of these molecules, we can say that there are 7 times 1.2 times 10 to the 23 total atoms. However, commonly, moles are used with regards to masses, volumes and concentrations of substances, rather than simply particles. To do this, there are three main formula you need to know. The first is moles is equal to mass divided by atomic mass. However, this formula can also be used for molecules, in which case relative atomic mass is replaced by relative molecular mass. Since you never need to explain this detail, for simplicity's sake, we will just use RAM to denote both of these two, i.e. moles equals mass divided by RAM. It is worth noting that mass must be in grams to use this formula. The second formula has two versions. The first applies at room temperature and pressure, i.e. 298 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere, and this is that moles times 24 is equal to volume. The second applies at STP, 273 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere, and that is that moles times 22.7 is equal to volume. The third formula is moles divided by volume is equal to concentration. During our videos, you may hear us refer to these triangles as mass divided by ram equals moles, moles times 24, or 22.7, equals voles, and moles divided by voles equals conch. 
In this video, we will be focusing on the first of these formula. The latter two will be covered in our successive video on volumes and concentration. For now, let's quickly show an example of how you could use the first of these formula, mass divided by ram equals moles. Which of these options has the greatest mass? 1.5 mole of N2H4, 3 mole of O2, 4.5 mole of NH3, or 37.5 mole of He2. Using the triangle, we can say that mass equals moles divided by ram. So, starting with option A, the ram is calculated by summating all of the atomic masses of the constituent elements. This gives 32, which can then be multiplied by 1.5 to give a total of 48 grams. Repeating this process for the four options, it can be seen that option D is the correct answer. It is worth noting that you will mostly use this formula with relation to equations and longer calculations of volume and concentration. We will explore this in our next video. But how does this all come together? Well, the IB will quite commonly ask you to calculate the relative atomic mass of an element based off of its isotopes. This is done using the following formula, where the relative atomic mass of the first isotope is multiplied by its percentage abundance, which is then summated with any remaining isotopes in the same way, before being divided by 100. So let's say we had a sample of boron, made up of 81.1% of the isotope boron-11 and 18.9% of the isotope boron-10. By using the formula, we can find the relative atomic mass for boron as 10.811. You could also be asked to do this in reverse, starting with the atomic mass and working out the percentage abundance of a single isotope. This is covered on our question pages. As previously mentioned, compounds are chemically bonded in fixed ratios. There are several different formula that can be used to describe a compound. Let's use the example of ethane. A compound's molecular formula expresses these exact ratios by showing how many atoms of each type are within a compound. For ethane, there are two carbons and six hydrogens, so the molecular formula is C2H6. A compound's empirical formula expresses the simplest whole number ratio of this molecular formula. For example, we can simplify C2H6 to CH3. A compound structural formula shows the physical arrangement of atoms in space. For ethane, it would look like this. For the IB chemistry exam, you need to be able to calculate the empirical formula of a compound from the mass of each element contained. This is best done in a table. For example, let's say we had a compound X with molecular mass of 99, which contains 6 grams of carbon, 1 gram of hydrogen, and 17.75 grams of chlorine. First, place each of the elements in its own column, and on the left side add a row for mass, mass divided by ram, and final ratio. Start by placing the mass of each element in its corresponding place. Then divide by their relative atomic masses, i.e. calculate the number of moles. Next, find the smallest value, here, 0 0.5, and divide each value by this. So, 0.5 divided by 0.5, 1 divided by 0.5, and 0.5 divided by 0.5. This provides the ratio of these elements in the compound. Therefore, the empirical formula of this compound is CH2Cl. It's worth stating that you can do the exact same process if given percentage abundances rather than masses of each element at the start. Some questions extend beyond this and ask you to find the molecular formula based off of your calculated empirical formula. To do this, first find the empirical mass by adding up the atomic masses of all of the elements in your empirical formula, which equals 49.5. Then compare this to the provided molecular mass in the question, which in this question was 99. We can see that the empirical mass is half of the molecular mass, and therefore the molecular formula must be twice our empirical formula, i.e. C2H4Cl2. We hope you enjoyed our second video in our IB Chemistry Topic 1 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.